Hi, hello, and welcome to today's video. This is gonna be a test your new makeup video. I think I've done like a bunch of these lately because there's just so much coming out that is interesting me. I wish it didn't, and I'm a little bit behind. I've had some of this stuff for a while. Some of the stuff I didn't pull the trigger on getting right away, but all of it's new, not in that it's like been out for about five seconds, but that it's been out for, I don't know, a couple of weeks. So most of this stuff isn't like brand brand new. It didn't just get released yesterday and arrived to me. Anyway, let me show you guys what's on today's agenda. And I will link timestamps in the description box of everything that I'm trying on in case you guys want to jump ahead to a particular product. The first thing that I picked up was the Lano Lips Multi, the Glazed Donut Multi-Use Balm. I guess Milk just got me on this like kick of getting balms that are flavored. So I also picked up the Blur Screen, the Blurring Primer Sunscreen from NYX. And then I picked up the new Slip Tint Concealer from Say. <laughs> I hope this is better than their last concealer. I picked up a mini of the Tartlet XL Tubing Mascara. I picked up the Dewy Bar Dewy Cheek and Lip Multi Balm from Kaja. And then I got the Polite Pops Powder Blush Stick from Polite Society. Haven't tried anything from them. They also threw in like, one of their little tester mascaras up. We're not gonna try that today. But then I also picked up one of the lip oils from Dee Dee Signature. She had launched these like mommy and me lip, oh, I guess they're lip glosses. Anyway, that's what's on today's agenda. I am wearing the Vintage Rose Palette from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. I bought a bunch of different indie brand shadows and I'm, I'm testing so many right now. I'm gonna have the craziest like indie brand ranking that's gonna come up, I don't know when, but anyway, um, I will link this in the description box. So far it is absolutely gorgeous. This color story is oof. Ooh, 10 out of 10. All right, let's get into it, you guys. I'm literally trying a new thing to keep my hair out of my face because I'm always like clipping it back. But I'm using this little headband that I got from Ulta. But like, how, what do I do with this? You know, when you have thin hair, like what are you supposed to do with all that? Oh, you guys. Like having thin hair or thinning hair as you get older, like, ah, like what am I, you know, I like spray paint this. All right, I'll just keep my head up so you guys don't have to see it. I wanna start off with the blur screen from NYX. I have kind of played with some of these and I will throw up like the prices on the screen. Usually I go over kind of everything, but I don't think I'll do that today. I like put this on and like rubbed this into the back of my hand. It's definitely blurring, but they put perfume in it. Like they fragranced it. I shouldn't say they put perfume. I thought it might be like natural ingredients. I'm gonna like show you guys the hands side by side because it does blur. It has like a decent blur to it. I haven't put it on my face yet, but you have to peel this off the back to kind of get to the ingredients list. And it literally says fragrance like halfway down. I was like, why would you need to add fragrance to like your primer and sunscreen. Originally I thought it was with the cactus flower extract and coconut juice that they do list on the back here, but it does say like fragrance in the middle, which I don't actually think is either of those two ingredients. Okay, so here's the side by side. Here's the side that has the primer and here's the side that doesn't. Like it does a decent job with blurring. I will give it that. I actually kind of like the idea of a primer and sunscreen in one. I have been using one from Lancome recently that I got as like a little tester, probably around like Christmas time in one of those advent calendars that I opened. And I actually really liked it. I think that my makeup sat really nicely on top of it and I liked kind of having two steps in one. Sometimes the problem with layering so much in the morning time is that my foundation doesn't sit nicely on top of it. I'm just gonna do one side so we can see the difference. The thing with Lancome is that it was so fragranced I could barely stand it. So I was hoping that this didn't have it. I didn't read the ingredient list before I bought it, but oh well. I actually did go to the beach pretty recently and, and the UVs must have been crazy because me and my whole family got sunburned in every little inch of skin that we didn't cover. It was absolutely awful. We were miserable for like an entire day afterwards. We were taking like oatmeal baths. I think we got a little careless and I'm done being careless. So I always sunscreen my face, but uh, this summer I'm gonna not take it easy at all. Yeah, I actually do think it blurs and kind of mattifies a little bit. This side is a little bit more shiny than the other one. I, I do think this actually works. The fragrance isn't super strong, but you can tell it has like some type of perfumey stuff in there. Why NYX? 
did you need to do that? Like lawn comb I get, lawn comb fragrances everything. I just didn't know NYX to add a ton of fragrance to stuff so I was just a little thrown off by it. I don't think that it lingers. I don't think it's super strong but you can smell it over the sunscreen. That's how I knew to even look for it in the first place. Anyway, let's move on into the mascara next because I would like to like allow this to sink in before I go in with foundation. So this one was just the mini and they did have a larger one but um, I have mentioned before that I'm trying to do like the minis when they come out with them when I'm testing a mascara for the first time. Ooh, what is this? What just came off on there? A mascara is going to be as costly as a ton of other products so I like doing minis if I can. This is one of those plastic molded bristled wands. I do like this so long as it picks up enough product. Let's start with my right eye first. Immediately, it's like a really tacky formula. It just gripped those lashes like whoop. I love these type of wands and that's primarily why I picked this up because one, I love testing new mascaras and trying to find like the next best thing. But also I like having a variety in my collection of different tubing mascaras versus not, some waterproof versus not. Wow, you guys, this is actually really nice. Look how pigmented it is and I didn't even hardly do anything yet. I think what I was trying to say is I just really liked the wand style of this and because it was a tubing mascara, I thought, yep, well, let's give it a shot. You guys, that is one coat, one coat. Let me like hold my head up. That's actually really intense. I actually really like this, like immediately. I don't always love mascaras immediately. See it like, it literally grips every single lash and it has a little bit of tug to it. Okay, Tarte. I haven't actually loved a Tarte mascara ever. I think the Lights Camera Lashes one was good back in the day. I don't know how it would stack up against my favorites now, but that's pretty much the only Tarte mascara I've ever kept or like really remember liking at all gripping every lash. It combs out really nicely. So it's really separating the lashes and it makes them look even more numerous, which I like. Even though some mascara formulas are really, really nice, some of them like clump my lashes together, make them look thinner, make them look more sparse. That's not to say that I don't like them, but I do love a mascara that gives me kind of a fan effect, which I think this one does. And that's one coat on both sides. Um, let's see if the right side is buildable. I just like dropped my chair down a little bit so you guys can kind of see the curl in the lashes. Mm, it's already dried. It's pretty crunchy already on that right side. So buildability, uh, 50%. It's still building. It's not too bad. It's not like getting clumpy but you can feel that it's already a little dry. So it does dry fairly fast. Yeah, buildability in the 50th percentile, I would say. I like it with one coat though. I actually really like this mascara on first impressions. We'll do a wear test to see how it holds up. I didn't curl my lashes at all, but I would love to see how this mascara holds up. Look at how long they look. It's pretty intense. Oh, I do like this. I wanna try on the Lana lips. I should have thrown this on earlier when I first started the primer, but I didn't. This is the glazed donut one. I have tested this. This was like the first thing I pulled out of the box to try when it got here. And spoiler alert, it doesn't taste like a glazed donut. What it tastes like is a maple donut. If you guys like maple donuts, this will take you straight to the donut shop. I'm not even joking. It's really, really thick. I mean, cause it's like an ointment. That's what they call it. Ointment multi-use balm. It's pretty high shine. It's definitely nourishing. It feels like you're rubbing a maple bar all over your mouth. I haven't tried Lana Lips before, so I wanted to test this out. I really like this, but it is strong. It is the strongest lip products I have ever put on. And I even think Milk did a really good job with the orange crush shade in the Kush Lip Oils that just came out. But this, this is even more intense. I've seen people do Lana Lips and I know they have like different flavors, but this one was a new release. Guys, if you love maple donuts, like you should try this. It is definitely something else. Let's go into this concealer. So it's called the Slip Tint Concealer. It's the Radiant All Over Concealer. I got mine in the shade three. I hope, I hope that's good. This only has a six month shelf life on it. I do wanna look up the claims specifically on this one though. I definitely bought this without 
really reading the description because I like a lot of Say products. In fact, I like the Glow Sculpt so much. When I was in store yesterday, I got another one in Mauve Glow. Oh, you guys, these are so freaking pretty. I need to do another blush declutter to get rid of even more blushes because I am just reaching for like my absolute favorites right now. This is so freaking pretty. I'm sorry. I love me a glowy, dewy blush lately. Anyway, so I got another one of those. So I, my point is I, I totally purchased this without even looking at it. So this seems to come in 25 different shades. It's supposed to be medium coverage, hydrating, long wearing, lightweight, non comedogenic concealer with a natural radiant, medium coverage, clinically proven to wear 12 hours smooth and hydrate skin. Okay, so it's supercharged with ingredients like niacinamide and hyaluronic acid to smooth and deeply hydrate for radiant skin. Now, their other concealer was literally like oil. It was so much oil like their foundation that if you let it sit, it would like immediately separate. And their concealer lid, I guess didn't close all the way. So when I had my concealer sitting in the drawer, whatever their original was, it leaked everywhere. Got oil all over my other concealers, I hated it. Doe foot applicator, pretty thick plastic bottle. Uh, if I didn't mention this before, it retails for $28. This is probably too deep of a shade in three. I can probably pull this off. This is just one of my deeper concealers and it has a warm, undertone to it. it has a warm tone so it's not like the perfect match every time i think maybe i should go like lighter like look how pink this looks online and this is one very light with neutral undertones it doesn't get any lighter with, than that and the same thing with number two the number two is very light with peach undertones and the shade looks super peach and then you get to three i just don't know this is like an actually pretty deep shade that's why sometimes going in stores for something like this is probably good to like swatch them but even then, I don't always have the best luck in stores either, finding like my perfect shade match. This has like a tack to it, but this looks more full coverage. It's definitely medium if it's not full coverage, like right away upon blending it in. It's not super thin. It has a bit of texture, a bit of stick to it once you rub it in. I mean, it's lightweight when you swatch it, but as you start to rub it in, it has some real tack to it. This is definitely very different than their original concealer. I don't know if anybody loved that. I'm, I'm just gonna throw that out there. All right, let's get this on. We'll go onto the right side first and we'll just do the under eye. Hmm. I don't think that gave me like a ton of coverage. Should I build it? I don't like building concealers too much because then they tend to crease. Wow, it does seem very lightweight under the under eyes. Like before you start to blend it, like the minute you touch it, it like changes consistency. I don't know, I just, that one little dot didn't seem like enough coverage for me. I like the way that it looks under the under eyes. I like the way that it feels under the under eyes. I don't think it's smoothing or filling in. And when I say that, I don't mean that it has silicone in it. I just mean there are some concealers that really give the appearance of filling in the hollows of my under eyes, even if they don't have any silicone in the actual form, in the ingredients, not formula, in the ingredients, but they give the impression. And sometimes that's in shade. I feel like this is more light coverage when it goes on. Sometimes I say that and I look back on camera and it's not super apparent that I still have a ton of dark circles under my eyes, but you guys, this is not full coverage right away. I do think though, I'm gonna regret building this up because it definitely felt fairly thick on the second go round. And it's like a slight radiance. If that helps you guys, it's definitely not like their original concealer, which felt like oil that you were just wiping under the under eyes. This one has more substance to it. And the radiance is minimal, you know? Like it's just hydrating not greasy by comparison. In my wear test, I will be doing as much natural light, whoa, excuse you, as much natural light check-in as I can. There's like not a ton of natural light happening out there, but I'll at least do it on my phone so you guys can see how it's looking after like four or five hours today. And then we'll come back at the end of the night to see how it's held up. All right, I need some powder. All I've got right here is my Dior Backstage Powder No Powder, and it's a light powder, so. I like grabbing for this when I'm testing new products because I know how this powder no powder performs. Plus it's not super heavy or drying. It's like a perfect little baseline. 
It does give me coverage though because it's in the shade 2N. This isn't brand new to me. This is one of the new NYX Buttermelt Bronzers. This one is in Butter Cup. I think this one is the, the lightest one in light neutral. I'm still testing it, so I wanted to throw this on today just to give myself a chance to wear it again. I have had one person in my comments say that they were a little upset that it came out more peach leaning than pink. And I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely understand that because it has a true peachiness to it, but I still like it. It's not orange, even though it's like a lighter peach. I don't know. I like that. I could see how that was disappointing, that it was more like peachy on the skin than pink. Still, there's something so light and airbrushing about it that I still really enjoy it. Also got a comment on one of my videos recently and I hope they never come back. That would be fabulous. They said something like, interesting bronzer application. I left a space between my hair and my forehead. No, they didn't say space. They said, interesting bronzer application. There's about a half inch between your forehead and your hairline. And I was like, oh, a half inch? Did you measure it? Thank goodness you were here. I'm just gonna let you know right now, like I'm all human. You know what? I'm not gonna edit this part out. I feel like I'm too old for trolls. People that waste their time saying things that are absolutely unnecessary. Do you think everyone out there is perfect? Do you think that it was necessary for you to say to me in a comment, interesting application, you missed a space? Like, who gives a shit? I mean, honestly, I've never said I was a makeup artist. Nobody watches me because they think I'm a makeup artist. And for you to waste your time, your energy, my eyes, to tell me I missed space between my hairline and my forehead, which by the way, happens to freaking everybody at least once, are the kind of miserable people that the world does not need. That's that's all that there is to it. What's even worse is that nastiness begets nastiness because the first thing I did was click on her picture and start analyzing her profile photo, which is an absolute waste of my time. And all I could think was, well, you must be very unhappy with your own personal appearance to be talking about somebody else's. Most people will just like move on, but then there's those occasional people that feel like they need to say something. Just unnecessary in life. Oh, I just, that just bothers me. Wasting your time to say something nasty to somebody in a comment on their videos is literally the ultimate uselessness. Uselessness. All right, both blushes. Wow, <laughs> those are not close shades. I got the powder blush stick in Sydney. If it matches the color of the box. What? Gas lightning? Oh, gas lighting. Can't even finish the thought. If it matches, it's more of a peachy shade. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a peachy shade. Oh, we're, oh well, we're doing it. So the PS Love List, good for you traits and ingredients we love coastal plant aids in moisturizing love and they have vitamin e which aids in soothing the ps no list is toxic ingredients and traits that are dead to us <laughs> parabens gaslighting and talc look at the gaslighting it's like a picture of a little street light all right focus look at that that's really funny no gaslighting okay okay and there's no talc in it this looks fully cream Kinda cool, kinda cool. Yeah, this looks cream. Very smooth texture. Oh, it's cold. This feels like a cream. This is so weird. This is really interesting. It's powder, but it feels like a cream. Oh, okay, that's all the product you get. You guys, it looks like a cream and it, and it goes on like a cream sort of, but like dries down to a powder. Is it like a cream to powder almost? I don't know, that's really interesting. And it's not as peachy. It has warmth to it, but it's definitely like mauve leaning. I don't know what they describe this as. I'll throw it up. Should I just draw this straight onto the cheeks? Am I safe? I will be because I can do whatever I want with my face. I don't know if that was the right thing to do. Even though it's powder, is it blending? Is it blending? Is it blent? Just kidding. It's definitely an interesting texture. It's like cold when it goes on. I almost feel like I could just go like this and it would like blend itself. It's airbrushing. I don't even think it's like fully matte. It even has like a slight hint of radiance to it. It was very simple and very easy. So long as looking back on camera, it's 
blended nicely. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell at this distance because I'm not wearing my glasses. It screws back on. So it probably will be pretty sturdy and won't come off. Anyway, I think that was fabulous. That was interesting. That was just different. And I kind of feel like, and I want to just like test it on the back of my hand that you could just like rub this on like that and then go, okay, it's done. <laughs> I mean, kinda, kinda. You just lay it where you want it and go Phew, and it's finished. So weird, you guys, powder in a stick. It's not bad, it's not bad. I actually really like the shade. It's more pink than I feel like this looks. If you guys could see it in person, I think the color definitely looks more pink. All right, this next one is the Dewy Bar Dewy Cheek and Lip Multi Balm from Kaja. And this one is in the shade Fig Smoothie. So they actually might be a little bit more similar in color. Kaja's so cute. Oh, so cute. Made with heart and seal. This one has a 12 month shelf life. This one also has a 12 month shelf life to it. I'm wearing press ons. <laughs> I'm not sure I've like worn press ons since I was a kid. I might have mentioned that in my last video. But anyway, I like don't know how to behave with them. So I can't open anything. All right, this is how it twists up. We'll see how much product we get. Uh, that's it, that's all, she, that's all she's got. It's actually quite a bit of product, quite a bit more than it appeared that the Polite Society one had. I am loving this look right now. I'm all pinked out. Ooh, I already like this. I wasn't able to like touch the whole product in my hand. I got like the center of it, but it's intensely pigmented. For being pretty dewy, it's got a, a decent amount of opacity to it. It does have a, fruit scent to it. It smells just like the YSL, they're renamed now, the Rouge Volupti Lip Shines, whatever they're called now, the Shine Lip Glazes or whatever, but it smells just like those ones. And I can never figure out like what the scent is, just smells like pina colada to me. These smell exactly like the YSL lip shines. Again, not sure how I should, you know what, I might regret it if I just go straight onto the cheeks. All right, we're going to take a brush and we're going to pick this product up with the brush and tap it in. I don't want to take any chances because it's so beautiful. See how pigmented this is? You don't need a ton. Very dewy, but not overly sticky. I have been enjoying very dewy blushes, but have noticed that I have been decluttering the ones that are really sticky. So I like that they have emollients and shine and a little bit of gloss and sheen to them so long as they're not that sticky finish where my hair wants to get stuck in it. And I think that's what this is. It doesn't have a ton of tack to it, even though nice radiance, really juicy radiance. Both of these are very different, but they're very nice. I have been judging blushes quite a bit harder recently as I've been paying more attention to what's legitimately gonna give me excitement later on not just like trying it on is it easy will i think about it what both of these have going for them i think is not only the cute packaging but that they were so simple already they're getting like five stars from me we'll see the wear test i'm definitely interested in seeing longevity in these products it's definitely not the end of the world if they don't this was just really easily blended in very nice again dewy without being sticky. And this one's like just this fully powdered kind of airbrushed looking product. So both of those, I feel like give me the feels. Do you guys see how like high shine this is? It like stays. It's that kind of thicker formula that isn't sticky that really locks down on your lips and doesn't dissipate after five and a half seconds. There's probably a lot of you that have tried Lana Lips before, but I really enjoy this. I still feel like I'm eating the literal maple bar, I can still smell it and taste it on my lips. This is the kind of product where the smell doesn't dissipate. I mean, it's strong. It's as strong as when I put it on, but I am gonna take it off because I'm gonna try one of these glosses and I've had this for a minute. I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you guys, that I have been picking up quite a bit of stuff from a ton of different indie brands. Gimme Glow Cosmetics was like just a one purchase. I've gotten Menagerie Cosmetics. I, I tried Terra Moon. I don't, I, I could just keep going. I have so many palettes I haven't even tried. And one of them being from DD Signature. This was a new release, the Mommy and Danny lip gloss collection where I feel like she came out with, again, flavors. And there was five different flavors and I picked up Watermelon. It's a really thick bottle, really big doe foot applicator. I wanna show you guys these little tiny watermelons. I mean, hopefully those aren't toxic or anything. 
What are they? They're like suspended. I mean, I guess it's not bad. So long as they like don't, are they paper? They're so cute though. Look how thick this is. Well, it's not a lip oil, I guess. So there's that. I'm pretty sure this is just clear. I think maybe just like a slight tint. Yeah, pretty much just a slight tint. All of these are pretty sheer, mostly just flavored. This is like the slightest tint of pink, but it feels like a lip oil. It says lip gloss, but it's not sticky at all. Mm, this kind of gives me the impression that it's probably not gonna like stay very long. Distinctly smells like watermelon. Like she definitely nailed the scent on this. Oh, oh no. Oh God. Nope, nope, I need water. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, that's not good. Oh no. This doesn't like list the ingredients anywhere on the package, but you guys, that tasted sour. That did not taste good at all. That did not have like a fruity flavor. It tasted like eating makeup, sour makeup. I don't know. You guys, don't eat that stuff. That is the worst tasting lip gloss ever. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that, but that's, that's awful. I feel like I've had quite a bit of luck with new releases lately and everything that I tried today, like it just feels really good. It feels like I just did my makeup for the day. Not that I'm like testing out a bunch of stuff. I wanna do the wear test on the mascara, on the blushes, on the concealer. So I will stop chatting for now. I will see you guys back here at the very end of the night and then we'll go over the footage of the check-ins that I did for my phone. I hope you guys enjoyed so far the try-on. I will catch you guys here in just a few secs. Bye for now. Hey guys, welcome back. It's 7.45. So I've had this on over eight hours, over nine hours at this point. I do wanna say that I noticed at the four hour mark, the Kaja blush was holding on more than the Polite Society one, but I can still see the Polite Society one. It almost looks like they're pretty even at this point, like in terms of wear. But I will say, I wasn't expecting the Kaja one to be as long lasting as it was. I thought that for sure, the Polite Society powder one was gonna last longer, but I don't think so. I think the Kaja one and this one have an equal wear time. They're not super long lasting, but they're pretty good for what I put a blush through. I mean, I was working and when I work, I'm always like holding my face, you know, I'm leaning. I'm the kind of person that puts makeup to the test. I will be a good judge of it because I am a face toucher, my goodness. But for me, I actually think these did pretty well. I'm not at all mad. And knowing that this Kaja one lasts a little bit longer than I was expecting makes me like it even more. The concealer did a really good job. No sinking into my fine lines. Even though I built it up, I wanna say it's faded off though. So I don't think it's super long lasting. I can't remember if this claimed to be long lasting, but what it did really well is stay hydrating throughout the day, didn't get drying, didn't get so heavy that it sunk in. I do really enjoy this concealer. I don't think it's gonna become one of my absolute favorites because it's not as long wearing as I would probably like long term. But if you're not looking for that, you're just looking for something more hydrating and you enjoy kind of a light buildable to medium coverage radiant concealer, then I think this is really good. So much better than their all over radiant, whatever that original concealer was. That was absolutely nonsense. I do wanna mention this faded off so fast. I can't even remember how quickly it faded. That's how quickly it faded. So this is more like a lip oil instead of a gloss. I think these are lip oils. It just says lip gloss on here. I don't know. I just, I didn't enjoy this. It smells really good, but oh God, getting it in my mouth was absolutely horrendous. Now, the mascara, I loved the mascara. I loved the way that it went on. I loved the way that it lasted throughout the day. It's still like going strong. The only thing is it transferred a little bit on this eye right here. I don't know if you can kind of see, but at one point it definitely transferred, but so minimal. And again, I put my mascaras through the test. Can't say that it's transfer proof, but the wear on it was gorgeous. The wand on it is lovely. I just, didn't think I was gonna love it as much as I did. I do, I love it. I highly recommend this Lanolips if you're looking for a little bit of a maple donut situation. Those were my final roundup thoughts, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. As always, I love to hear your feedback in the comments below. I'm out of here for this evening, you guys, and I hope to catch y'all in my next video. Bye.